Hello class, in this video we shall be discussing on the topic solubility of gases and solids and liquids. So let us first see the definition of solubility. We can define it, it, we can define it in two ways. The first one is solubility of a substance expresses the maximum amount of it which can be dissolved in a specific amount of solvent. In simple way it means the maximum amount of substance that can be dissolved in a given amount of solvent is called solubility. The second one, solubility of a substance at a given temperature is defined as the amount of the solid that dissolves 100 gram of the solvent at a given temperature to form a saturated solution. Okay, so which means the amount of solid that will dissolve in 100 gram of the solvent at a particular temperature to form saturated solution is called solubility. Okay. The next one is we shall be discussing on what factors does the solubility depends on either be it solubility of gases or solids in liquids. Okay. So it depends on the following factors. The first one is the nature of solute and solvent. The second one is the temperature and the third one is the pressure. So we shall be dealing in detail one by one. Okay. So for this we shall be dividing into two types. Okay. One is gases. Okay. The solubility of gases in liquids and the other one will be solubility of solids in liquids. Okay. So let us first see the solubility of solids in liquids. Okay. So let us first discuss about the solubility of solids in liquids. Under this, the first factor is the nature of the solute and solvent. We know that substances are of two types, that is ionic and po or polar, and the other one is covalent or non-polar substances. Okay. Now, the ionic or polar compounds, they dissolve readily in polar solvents. Okay. Say for example, NaCl, okay. NaCl is a polar compound. They dissolve readily or more easily in water. But the ionic or polar compounds, they do not dissolve readily in non-polar solvents. Okay. Then next one. That is covalent or non-polar compounds dissolve readily in non-polar solvents. Okay. So for example, naphthalene. Okay. Naphthalene is a covalent or non-polar compound. They dissolve easily in non-polar solvents like benzene. Okay. And hence we can say that like dissolve like. Okay. So if it is polar molecules then or polar compounds then it will dissolve in polar solvents more easily rather than in non-polar solvents. So, so vice versa for the another one also. Okay. So now the next one is temperature. Okay. So under temperature, there are three factors. Again, okay? I mean, there are three situations where the solubility of the solids in liquids will depend. Okay. So in the first one, that is solubility will increase with the increase in temperature. Okay. And this happens in most of the substances. Okay. So one of the example can be NH4Cl, that is ammonium chloride. Okay. Then the second one, solubility can also decrease. Okay, solubility can also decrease with the increase in temperature. One of the example is lithium sulfate. Okay, Li2SO4. Then the third one, um, okay, the, for the second one, see, for the decrease in solubility with increase in temperature, the substances are very few okay now the next one is the solubility is irregular with increase in temperature which means it may decrease it may increase okay it doesn't have any fixed point okay so one of the example is sodium sulfate that is Na2SO4 okay the third point for the solubility of solids in liquids is pressure okay so here the effect of pressure on the solubility of solids in liquids is very small. Okay. Now let us see the next part that is of the solubility of 
gases in liquids okay the first one is the nature of the solute and solvent so here most of the soluble gases are those which chemically react with the liquid solvent okay say for example like nitrogen okay nitrogen hydrogen oxygen these gases they dissolve in water only up to a small extent okay but the gases like ammonia sulfur dioxide hydrogen chloride they are highly soluble in water okay and this is due to the chemical reactions of these gases with water to form like ammonium hydroxide sulfurous acid and hydrochloric acid respectively the second one is the effect of temperature and third one will be effect of pressure but before i move on to the second point let me tell you that the solubility of gases in liquids is greatly influenced by the temperature and pressure so now the second point effect of temperature the solubility of gas decreases with increase of temperature okay this is because in general the gas okay the gases dissolve in a liquid with the evolution of heat that is an exothermic process okay so whenever the gas dissolve in a liquid they will evolve heat but when an additional heat is given that time the solubility will decrease okay the third point is the effect of pressure okay here the solubility of gases increases with the increase of pressure let us see experimentally how the solubility of gases will increase with the increase in pressure okay now let us take a system where the gas molecules are in dynamic equilibrium with the solution okay so the lower part shows the solution phase and the upper part shows the gaseous system having pressure p and temperature t okay now the word dynamic equilibrium means the number of gaseous molecules entering the solution phase will be equal to the number of dissolved molecules leaving the solution phase if three are entering then three molecules will leave okay so that is what it mean by dynamic equilibrium so let us reduce i mean increase the pressure by compressing the gas okay by compressing the gas to a smaller volume then what happens see earlier the gas molecules were very much free to scatter okay but in this case now for every volume the number of gases are increasing okay say suppose earlier before the pressure was increased in this case say suppose in this much volume say only one gas molecules is formed okay but after the pressure was increased by compressing it say in this much same volume the number of gas molecules have been increased to three okay so that means for every per unit volume the number of gases molecules is increasing and therefore and therefore see the more molecules okay more gaseous molecules will be striking the surface of the liquid and hence more gaseous molecules will dissolve and the solubility of gas will increase okay so this will keep on increasing till a new equilibrium is reached thus we can say that increasing the pressure okay can or increasing the pressure thus increases the solubility of gases now according to william henry he gave a quantitative relationship between solubility of a gas in a solvent and pressure okay known as the henry's law okay so henry's law states that the mass of a gas okay the mass of a gas dissolve per unit volume of the solvent at a constant temperature is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas in equilibrium with the 
solution. So mathematically we can write if M is the mass of the gas dissolved in a unit volume of the solvent and P be the pressure of the gas in equilibrium with the solution then we can write M is directly proportional to P or M is equal to Kp where K is known as the proportionality constant okay and also we can express this in terms of mole fraction which is mole fraction of a gas okay mole fraction of the gas in the solution is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas over the solution which is given by mole fraction is directly proportional to the partial pressure okay so x can be equal to k dash p okay so in the next step this p will be equal to 1 by k dash x okay so p equals to kh x okay so where this kh is known as the henry's law constant okay this kh is known as henry's law constant okay and hence we can alternatively state the henry's law this way okay that is the partial pressure of the gas in the vapor phase is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the gas in the solution the next one is limitation of henry's law and application of henry's law okay so i want you to go in detail for this too from your textbook okay here i shall just highlight about this one okay so the first one is about the limitation of henry's law okay the henry's law is valid if the following points are there so it will be valid if the pressure is low okay at high pressure the low becomes less accurate okay when the pressure is high the low becomes less accurate therefore the pressure should remain low okay and the proportionality constant shows considerable deviation then the second point it will be valid if the temperature is not too low okay so it should not be too low otherwise the henry's law will not be valid the third point is it will be valid if the gas is not highly soluble if it is very highly soluble then the henry's law is not valid in that case okay the fourth point it will be valid if the gas neither reacts chemically with the solvent nor dissociates or associates in the solvent okay the next one is applications of henry's law okay i shall be giving you one application kindly check out the other applications okay so that is about the high altitude okay so at high altitudes the partial pressure of oxygen is less than that at the ground level now this results in low concentration of oxygen in the blood and tissues of the people living at high altitudes or climbers the low blood oxygen causes the climbers to become weak and unable to think clearly known as anoxia okay 